It's difficult for me to be objective about the weapons that I legitimately like using. They don't need to be the most powerful, they don't need to be the most interesting, but they do gotta deliver a solid and satisfying gameplay experience. The Tsuge Prime is one such weapon, and today my friends I have the absolute pleasure of revisiting my old favorite crossbow. As always my name is Lazar and I got a couple of builds lined up, something cheap, something affordable, something that a more casual Tenno can get into, but fear not my veteran friends. We also got the <laughs> in-game setup, prime mods, galvanized mods, we're gonna hit it up with a ribbon over in steel path to see exactly what the weapon is capable of. That said though, please bear in mind that my builds and guides usually take a more new player friendly tone, simply because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a vet and you already know most of this stuff, you can either skip ahead or have a bit of patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Tsuge Prime. Let's begin by having a quick look at how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of our regular free shots. The Zuge Prime is an automatic crossbow and basically that says almost everything. This is a projectile based attack with a slight projectile drop off. You see that? It kind of drops a little bit off, but you're only really going to be worried about that if you're trying super long range shots. Simply aim slightly above enemies heads. Fire rate, solid, automatic, beautiful, fantastic, hitting the point every single time. Recoil, what recoil? Almost nothing. It just jiggles a little bit, but <laughs> let's be honest here, my friends. Who doesn't like a little bit of a jiggle, if you know what I mean? The reload is a big issue, on the other hand. It's free whole seconds. That is definitely a lot for only a magazine size of 30. And I don't know if you can hear that, but that's my sweet little baby in the background. She'll be joining us today on our adventure. Now, one more thing about the Zuge. The projectiles explode after a 0.6 second delay, as you can see in a 2.6 meter radius we're looking at a very small explosion that accounts for about 45% of the total damage. So you got two damage instances, the projectile making contact with the target and then the explosion. Yes, 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 fantastic. Now, let's hop into stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. I think my wife took my baby out. Hey, bring her back! It's okay, bring her back, it's fine. These guys don't mind, it's okay. Accuracy is 40, so as you saw there, as long as you can aim the weapon, as long as you take into account the fact that you got projectile travel time and a slight drop off, you will have no issue getting your headshots. And headshots you should go for because this is a critical weapon. Fire rate of 5.5, which is solid, magazine of 30, which is good, silent, yes, it will not break Ivara's cloak even when the things explode. And 3 seconds reload. Why? Why, for the love of God, did you ever think three seconds was necessary, dear D? Two seconds would have been fine. Nobody about balance. What's balance? Schmalance. Riven disposition, a whopping four out of five. Because this is not a very popular weapon. I don't know if you know this about me, but I really enjoy the underdog. And this one definitely packs a punch. Which is why I have mod capacity 60 out of 60. But if you are comes around a measly 30 out of 30, you jump to actions and you plug in the Auto King Catalyst. Should you do that, however? Should you invest in this weapon? If you want a cool automatic crossbow with explosive projectiles, yes, definitely. If you want the most OP overpowered AOE weapon, this is not it. Alright, this is for fun and it does still pack a punch. Where was I? Oh yeah, close WhatsApp. That's not yours WhatsApp, it's my WhatsApp. Sorry about that one. There we go, fixed. So ignore it. Critical chance, 26% with a multiplier of 2.0x. Not exactly fantastic, right? But still workable considering the mods we have at our disposal. Status chance 30% is not bad. Impact puncture slash with a high emphasis on puncture that's going to be dealing extra damage to heavily armored targets, which is a good Thing. Besides, we don't care about the proc priority since we're going to be munitioning this one anyway, so there you go. Now, the radial attack deals 40 damage. The normal damage is 50, so this is the projectile hitting the target. This is the explosion, and like I said before, it attributes for about 45% of the damage. Keep that one in mind when we talk about galvanize something a little bit later. The damage fall off is going to be 30%, which is not exactly fantastic. You also got a 0.6 second delay. You know, at our lands, wait 0.6, then it explodes, and the damage fall off is again decent with a 2.6 uh, meter range. The range is terrible and when you're getting ranges like this it's not really worth being, building into range. Even with Prime Firestorm you're only going to 4.3 but hey if that's the road you want to take it's not exactly the most horrible idea. Now let's check out a standard build shall we? Damage acceleration, multi-shot split chamber, critical chance and critical damage reduce a critical deceleration as well as vital sense. 
There's a bit of a slight issue with critical acceleration. The fire rate drops down a bit too much for my taste. It goes to... Oh, wait, hold on. Ignore violent acceleration. It drops down to 3.3, which normally is a big issue. It simply feels sluggish and slow and awkward, just like me. But that's not important. What is important, you can fix that with a little bit of fire rate with violent acceleration or whatever else fire rate mod you desire. I still prefer this one because of the 90% times 2 for both and all whatnot. You get how that one works. Fantastic, fantastic mod. Then you only lose 15% of your serration, not all damage so do bear that one in mind what was i saying oh yes this solves one usability issue but it doesn't solve the other which is why i would need one more mod slot on this weapon reload speed reload speed reload speed reload speed because that three seconds simply gets bloody annoying so you can go with something like fast hands or the prime fast hands but hey there's no room on the build so we're just gonna simply go like this and of course, Hunter Munitions with the 260-60 Valor Mods, Malignant Force, and Rhyme Rounds. Malignant Force from Corrupted 4 in the Void, just like any 60-60 Toxin Mod, and Rhyme Rounds from Spy Missions in the Excellent slot. Should you unlock this one? 100%? Absolutely. Terminal Velocity, 60% Projectile Flight Speed. Projectile Flight Speed makes it easier for you to aim. Easier to aim, more headshots, more damage. But how are you gonna calculate that? Huh? There is no feasible way to tell you or show you a spreadsheet where I say, hey, this one gets you this much more DPS because it really depends on player skill. Though we can work out something with number of shots and percentage of those shots being headshots, but that would be a little bit too subjective now, would it? The point is, a mod such as this one adds a lot of damage to your play, but it's not exactly something I can put into paper. You get what I'm saying? Hopefully you do. As for the MT Arcane slot, we're not gonna include anything for a standard uh, new player-friendly setup. But, of course, primary deadhead if you're going for a raw strength approach, something like corrosive and heat, because that's not a bad idea. But if you're going for the standard hunter munitions approach, of course, primary merciless is going to be the way to go. Dexterity only if you're going to be using it in tandem with your melee. Also, primary merciless solves one of my issues. 30% reload speed. And that 30% reload speed jumps in as soon as you equip the mod. You see how that one dropped? from 3.0 to 2.3, so it really solves a usability issue with the weapon. Solves 2.3 is still kind of a lot, it mostly solves. Now, what next? We're gonna test, yes, we're gonna test with an empty build just to make sure that nothing skew our test results and all whatnot. It would be very easy for me to add a few Warframe buffs and say, hey, look how powerful this weapon is, bruh. But it would be faking now, wouldn't it? Go for headshots on the level 120 Corrupted Heavy Goon, absolutely destroying the level 120 Corrupted Heavy Goon. Take a look at that, take a look at that. It is incredible to use, but it does have that stupid long reload. Why DE? Why? Why? Did you buy it was gonna be overpowered? You can't possibly say something like that, now can you? Nobody would believe you. Yes, yeah, sweetheart. Yes, you wanna be here with daddy while I test? You want up here? No, you don't want here? Alright, that's fine either way. No? Alright, go to mama. Mama loves you just as much as I do. Mwah. What was I? Oh yeah, destroying targets. As you can see, we got plenty of slash, plenty of fire. What more do you want? That's it, that's it. That's it, you're done, you're done, it's fine. For a introductory level build with no fancy mods, not even a goddamn arcane, this is more than respectable. Technically, this is the king of crossbows. Now let's assume the following. We're gonna assume the following. You're not a new player. You've been around the block a couple of times. Oh, and by the way, this is a Forma easy weapon. Only free Forma I have in mind. You can get away with something like one Forma, believe it or not. If you do have the necessary uh, resources, you can invest into Galvanized Chamber. Definitely a good idea. A Riven. And you can also use something like a... Like a... Fine, a Bane mod. Because we're building into Slash, a Bane mod is not a bad idea. A Faction mod. But if you can't stand this thing, because it's disgusting gross and it stands for bad design language, you can simply not use it. It will be fine up until level 200-ish. Let's talk about the following mod, Galvanized Aptitude. Now, you remember when I told you that this one has an explosion? Yes, well, Galvanized Aptitude's damage bonus does not apply to that explosion. So, essentially, the bonus damage from Galvanized Aptitude does not apply to about 45% of the weapon's potential damage, which is why we're not using it. Yes, it does apply to this portion of the damage, to the 198 you see here, not to the 158. Why? This explodes, this doesn't. It's basically how Galvanized Aptitude works. Should you still use it? No, not really. Nah, not really. Honestly, if it would give its full benefit, but it doesn't, so there you go. You can complain to over to DE because they said they don't want this to work on explosive weapons, so uh, there you go. Terminal Velocity, Primary Merciless, let's go! 
the same crop that we goons level 120. Now this being a gal when I set up, I will have to get a couple of kills until my build is in full swing. You will notice the following, I am missing my fire rate. Oh my fire rate, where have you gone? I don't really need it. Honestly, now I want to be more efficient with my shots because take a look at the raw power these things have. Boom, 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 dead. I don't even need to wait for procs. Of course I can wait for procs, but let's try... Mm. That's a single shot into that guy. Look at that. A single shot into the guy. I got four procs. Four vitals, one slash. A single shot into that. Absolutely destroyed. Look at that. Look at that. What more do you want? Now I know what you're gonna say. Dude, you're shooting standing still targets in the head. Of course it's easy. Well, let's try some steel path, shall we? That was a bad snap. I should try better. Try it one more time. It's still bad. Hold on. Hold on. It's a bad snap day. Look at that, a corrupted heavy gun level 130 and I got absolutely no stacks whatsoever of galvanized anything and I still absolutely murder it without any issue whatsoever. Welcome to the void and these are the corrupted level 130-ish steel path corrupted. Now let's see what the Zuge Prime can do against these. Do you guys prefer the correct pronunciation? The Zuge? Or the Zuge? Or the Zuge? <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Anyway, uh, of course the... <laughs> Infested aren't really gonna pose much of a risk and as you can see the only targets that can Take more than two seconds to destroy are the corrupted heavy goons simply because those have a whole lot more EHP As for performance in steel path, this is a whole lot more than respectable It basically charms for whatever stands before it and you're not really gonna have any issue whatsoever So if you enjoy this kind of weapon more power to you my friends because it is quite the awesome experience And I can only recommend it now, if you want to make it more powerful than this, of course you can, of course you can, but we're gonna have to access some more frame buffs and or synergies. And for that, let's head on over back to the simulacrum. And who better than Lady Mirage Prime and her outstanding buffs. You know what, let's switch the fashion a little bit, I'm kind of getting bored of this one. Not that it's not fantastic though, this is my original one. Where's the blue one? There we go, the blue one. And this will match quite nicely to the Tsuge Prime. Now. Same build as we did before, as for Warframe buffs, what we're gonna be using is Corrosive Projection against heavily armored targets. This is not a mandatory mod, you don't necessarily need to have it. If your Warframe build calls for whatever else, use whatever else. Arcane's a lot more impactful. While Arcane Rage is definitely a pass, you don't necessarily need this one. You should have more than enough flat damage at this point. I would say definitely don't pass on Arcane Avenger R5. On damage, 21% chance for 45% critical chance for 12 seconds. Bonus additive after, simply stacking on top of what you already have. Applying to your primary, secondary and to your melee at the exact same time. Now, fire rate would be a much better idea from my point of view if you want to streamline the experience with the Tsuge. Also, you got that reload speed now, so this should work quite nicely. We're going to be using Arcane Acceleration, 40% chance for 90% fire rate to primary weapons without shotguns for 9 seconds and the usual plus 1 Arcane revive now we're gonna bump up the level to 165 corrupted heavy goons unpause the eye so they can hit me and i can get my glorious absolutely glorious buffs oh i forgot about the companion okay so companion buffs either panzer vulpophila which gets you vital procs if you are reliant on the panzer vulpophila procs then you can build a weapon for something like corrosive and heat you don't need to build vital on it anymore though keep in mind it's still more reliable to build vital on your weapon we're gonna be using the sentinel any sentinel just make sure that on that sentinel as weapon you got the four vigilante mods for the 20% chance to enhance critical hits from primary weapon empower for mirage and her free ability for an absolutely massive eclipse buff and one more time for the ever so lovely clones beautiful fantastic now we're gonna go for headshots headshots my friends now we got the crit we got the fire rate as you can see a single arrow in these guys heads absolutely annihilating whatever stands before you what i'm trying here to do is show you a single arrow in a head like that boom fan Fantastic. As you can see, the weapon absolutely clears high-level targets, at least these high-level targets. But keep in mind, we are using Mirage for those buffs, which makes the weapon a whole lot more powerful than it is. Should you play the Zuge Prime? Well, I offered you all the information you need. For my two cents, it definitely gets my seal of approval. It's an extremely powerful and satisfying weapon to use, as long as you understand its limitations and its usability quirks. As always, my name is Ben Laser. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, share, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you got any sorts of feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. Also, in the comment section down below, if you guys want to suggest any particular type of content. Now, that was just beautiful. Fantastic. You can also catch me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places.
And if you love the content and you want to help me keep making it, consider supporting us via Patreon. It helps a ton. Link the cards right now. But until next time, my friends. That was the wrong button. Bye-bye.